Welcome back to another episode of NFL News on the Boom Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today I want all the smoke because I already know how this is about to go, but I don't care. I thought about it uh, all last night. I thought about it today, and I am ready to say that the Falcons made a really bad move. I won't go crazy, call it dumb, horrible, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to just say they made a bad move. You know, it happens. People people do these things. And there are so many people out there that are putting out their justifications and everything. So like I said, I'll take the smoke. I know people are going to come at me and tell me why I'm wrong and all that. That's fine. People ain't going to actually listen to this. They're just going to read the title and tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. But I'm just like I usually do. I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions, my um background on why i think it was a bad move and then it's up for people to then decide if they actually you know listen so for me you look at the falcons taking michael Penix, and immediately one of the issues that i have with this is that my well for me personally michael Penix is not a first round quarterback prospect let alone a top 10 and so that's going to be subjective. Uh, obviously, if the team thinks that he's elite now, do I believe they thought he was better than all these other quarterbacks? Uh, no, but I'm going to operate from that assumption. We're, we're going to stay with that um, line of thinking that they view him as an elite prospect because the decision it or the conversation is more about the decision less about Michael Penix and so I'm going to operate that this is an elite quarterback the problem with that is that you just signed a quarterback so it doesn't really matter if you think he's elite that's that's like saying the the Chiefs think Caleb Williams is an elite quarterback that's like um any team you want to whatever i mean that's like the um chargers looking last year and saying man cj shroud's an elite quarterback like all of that's nice you could think somebody's an elite quarterback you could think that any player is an elite prospect but if it doesn't make sense for your roster it doesn't make sense now quarterback in particular is hard because you have uh one spot it's not running backs that i can rotate uh, I mean, you could rotate quarterbacks, but obviously people don't do that. Um, this ain't receiver where it's three of them out there at a time. This ain't defensive end. This ain't none of those positions. It's one quarterback. And so you only got that roster space. And then on top of that, you have the whole salary cap and the financials of it, where you just do not have the ability to hold two quarterbacks at the same time if it's going to be cost prohibitive prohibitive excuse me so for example my chicago bears there's a whole back and forth about keeping justin fields and caleb williams a big difference in that is that they both would be on rookie contracts you didn't have to pay justin fields to keep them anything more than what you was already paying them and you don't have to pay caleb anything more than the rookie scale so that makes that a different decision financially. Not obviously there's other stuff, but financially. But for the Falcons, a team can barely sustain a massive quarterback contract for the roster, let alone for you to then use another spot to pay another quarterback that you're not using. And so, but Obviously, some people will say, hey, backups get paid and all that. Just look at it as a really high backup. And then the other issue with that then becomes, uh, you know, the fact that you still are paying Kirk Cousins and that you spent a top pick on that. So I'll, I look at it like this. You got three main resources in the NFL. You got your salary cap. So pretty much any dollars that you have for the cap, you have your draft picks and then you have your players, which also can be used as assets, obviously on the field, but off the field, too. So 
The problem with what the Falcons did is that you used up two major of uh, you used up two of the three major assets to fill the same position in the same offseason. So this isn't, hey, we paid Kirk Cousins last year and we're getting uh Penix this year. This th that's not it. And some people will say, well, what if you had uh, Kirk ha had Kirk Cousins been on the team for 13 years, this would look different, or people would take it differently. No, you gave Kirk Cousins a brand new contract. I don't care if he's been on the team for 13 years, or if he just signed this off season like he did in real life. You committed cap money to Kirk Cousins that it can't be used in other places. So you use one major resource. You have a top 10 pick in the draft, which again, every draft class is different. But prior to the draft, you have um, trading capital. And in the draft, obviously, you have the ability to acquire talent. So you use that on a quarterback again. So now we're in a situation because of the salary cap, because of the way that the... Um, the wages, the salary and for quarterbacks are you set up a position where they're going to cannibalize each other because there's two things that you want. You either want the play of, a, uh, I'll say a veteran quarterback. I, Cause I know some people will be like, Kirk Cousins isn't that good. A veteran quarterback starting quarterback. You want the play of that, that you pay for, or, you want the play of a, a, a developing rookie quarterback or quarterback on a rookie uh, contract, I should say. Excuse me. So those two things can't happen at the same time. Either you're going to get the play from Kirk Cousins that you paid for and lose years on Penix rookie contract or Penix is going to get in and play and you're going to get those years on a rookie contract, but then you're going to lose the play from Kirk Cousins, which you paying all his money for. So it just it it is a bad move to me. It just if you look at I think structurally it's a bad move. Now you again you can feel how you want about Penix, you can feel how you want about Kirk Cousins, but structurally it's just a bad move in the economics of the NFL, and so. Again, people try to continue to justify it. What if Kirk Cousins gets hurt? Um, okay. And, you know, that's understandable. But again, you're not going to get both things at once. It's just not going to happen. So if you uh, it, if you look at it the way the GM said, hey, if we don't have Penix playing, that means we're winning, which is good. OK, yeah, if you pay somebody a hundred million dollars guaranteed, you should expect to win. And if you expect to win like that, why would you then go and get another quarterback where you're going to eat into his rookie or the years on his rookie deal? And then the other way around, if you really felt like Michael Penix was that type of guy and really that elite then why would you spend that money on Kirk Cousins? So one you one of these things is true because they can't be true at the same time. Either you did not do your proper homework on Mike on Penix because I don't I do not want to hear oh the pro day they didn't see him throw live, bro. If you if you could not evaluate this player to call him elite. If you could not feel that he was elite until you went to a pro day, then you're not good at your job. Point blank, period. If you are like, hey, this prospect is OK or I'm neutral on him. And then you go to a pro day and then you're like, oh, my God, he's elite. You're bad at your job. So either you didn't do your homework on Penix or you changed your mind on Kirk Cousins. One of the two happened. It's just it's that's just what it was. So, again. 
people try to uh, justify it compared to other situations and it just doesn't compare to any other situation because of the timing again had this happen next year I would feel completely different about it but because you did it in the same offseason it just it shows poor planning now the other issue on top of that because yes you're going to cannibalize the two quarterbacks but on top of that you also gave up the opportunity to add to your roster. So I would say, let um, I don't even know. I don't even know. Because, um, let me see. Is there a good, let's say the uh, Giants, I guess. I don't know. Is that a good? No, that's not a good one. Someone in the NFC South. Let's just say the Panthers. Sorry. <laughs> let's just say the Panthers. Same, same division. Let's just say you were the Panthers. And you feel like, yeah, we're nowhere near close to competing in this division. And, and I mean the Panthers without Bryce Young. So let's just say that. Or let's let's say it's Bryce Young. Go ahead. That's fine. Let's say that the Panthers before Bryce Young, we paid a quarterback decent money. I'm not even going to say Kirk Cousins money. We paid a quarterback decent money because we want we think that you know, they could be a person for us. Um, and then you get the opportunity to get a Bryce Young or whatever, a quarterback in the top 10. And so I would be okay with that because you're in the rebuilding phase. The problem that for me that puts it over the top is that the Falcons aren't in a rebuilding phase phrase you or phase sorry you literally you have like incredible weapons the, the the story about the falcons were you were competing because the division is so weak that you are competing every year even though you're not winning a lot but you have the chance to compete and you have these incredible weapons but you don't have a quarterback that can get you over the hump and you don't quite trust your head coach. That was the story. So what do you do? You go get a new head coach that you believe can bring this team together fully. And then you go pay the money for a quarterback that can give you competent play. So the thought process is we're in win now mode. And again, had you been in uh, um, NFC West, Actually, that probably would have been a better example. Sorry. Let's say that they paid Geno a crazy amount of money, and then they went and drafted a quarterback. I would I would feel differently about that. Or my bad, the Cardinals. I, I am, I'm going down. I am like failing at this analogy, but the Cardinals. That's probably the perfect one. The Cardinals. We already paid. Uh, Kyler and let's say that the Cardinals were at three or two and they said we're going to take Jaden Daniels I would understand that more you know why because we don't fully trust Kyler that was an old regime and we're not beating the 49ers anyway so let's just let's let's hedge our bets a little bit that I would understand the Falcons are in a different situation you're in a division that is wide open whether or not you think you can win in the playoffs doesn't matter you could make it to the playoffs so you want to get your roster and you want to use your assets to build your roster as competently as possible to compete and so not only do you hurt the Kirk Cousins situation not only do you hurt Penix but then you hurt your team by skipping over number eight um, and using it on somebody else. Trading back, using it on somebody that you know is going to be there while getting more capital to continue to add to your team. And so, I, like, trading back, some people will be like, at least trade back and get Penix. I, I don't know. Because I really don't know how people felt. Like, obviously, you hear a lot of stuff, and last night shows you, even though it shows you every year, the draft is undefeated. Yet, people seem to believe what they want to believe. We don't really know what these teams feel. So, some people feel like, hey, the Raiders or somebody was going to jump up and get Penix. So, I get it. If you trade back, you might not get Penix. 
But the point is, you shouldn't have been trying to get Penix in the first place. So, for me, the Falcons, they just made a bad decision. And I'm, I'm going to have to stand on that. It really doesn't matter if Penix is good or not. Penix can be 10 times the prospect I think he is. It doesn't matter because you sunk cost now. You either sunk a premium top 10 pick into a person that's not going to play, or you sunk a bunch of money into a person that's not going to uh, play. Excuse me. And, oh, the other, uh, you know, argument is, oh, you don't, people don't understand. We're going to get rid of Kirk Cousins and have a quarterback on a rookie deal ready to go. Kirk Cousins out is in three years. It's not two. People keep saying two. Um, if they could, if they were going to cut him in two years, they might as well cut him now because, like the 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 hit is going to be the hit. the The true out is after three years, three seasons. So three seasons is typically how long it takes for a quarterback to or a player to be fully evaluated. Um, and if Penix doesn't play for three years and then he's kind of like Jordan Love where then he, you know, steps up to be the starter after Kirk Cousins leaves. So now in your fourth year as a pro, you you get to start and we got to figure out if we're going to pick up your fifth year option after that. So, yeah, but the thing is Jordan Love won the top 10 pick. And so, also, the Falcons roster wasn't as good as the Packers. So, it just, it's, it's just, it's not a, it's not a good idea all around. Um, obviously, you know, it's not going to end the team. You'll figure it out and you'll move on. But just, it was, it was a bad move. It was a, it was, I think, an objectively bad move. And, It'd be one thing if you said, yeah, we kind of messed up on Kirk Cut. So I, I guess I'll say this, and hopefully we can all agree on this. Either Kirk Cousins and his deal was a bad move or draft and Penix was a bad move. Either way, Falcons made a bad move somewhere this offseason. So that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And thank you for listening.